And who is the target audience for the whole Nextcloud? If I you can use the word suite, because you have a lot of applications there. Is it regular consumer like you and me? I mean, not you, but I mean, <laughs> we are power users. But is it about the you know uh, uh, enterprises? Is it about public sector companies? Who is the target audience? <laughs> That's a funny question because if you read like a business books 101, then you th then the answer is you always should focus on one specific vertical, one specific target group. For us, it's really all of those that you mentioned. It's next is very popular with home users, which just use it at home for your friends and family, two, three people. But it's also used by big governments. It's also used by lots of universities, research organizations, schools, and also a lot of companies like um, organizations like Nextcloud, who like are global, have offices and people all over the world and need a, a way to collaborate and to work together over the internet. So it's it's really all of those. So in a way, we're making a big mistake here by focusing on everybody, but it works quite well for us. It is useful for everybody. I mean, they have the same case with uh, Google Workspace or Dropbox or, you know, Microsoft. Yes. Where, you know, it, it is for everybody. It, it scales to the scale of an enterprise. It has private yep. feature for government and it has everything that you need for consumers. Now, uh, if I, when the early days of Nextcloud was there and I was involved, you know, because as an open source user, I was consuming a lot of Nextcloud myself at that point. Um, how people today can install it? Is it still self-hosted or the hosting provider? So they, because sometimes a lot of folks, they are not tech savvy, but they do want, they care about privacy. So they do yep. want access to these technologies. So how do you make it accessible at the same time? How do you make it scalable? So big organizations, they don't have to rely on a third uh, party cloud provider. So just give us a picture of both sides. So there are lots of different options. I mean, as you said at the very beginning, it was more like a open source, nerdy, geeky tool. And there, of course, we had uh, the instruction manuals, how to set it up a custom on a Linux server, and it still works. But nowadays, Nextcloud is a lot more mainstream for people who don't really want to configure things on the command line. And then we have different options. If you still want to run it on your own infrastructure, we have a super nice uh, Docker-based setup. It's called Nextcloud All-in-One. It's a Docker-based um, container image. You can just download it, you run it, and it, everything is automated and asks you some questions. And this scales to, like, I don't know, tens or 50 or 100 or a few hundred users. Uh, but then, of course, then you have the really big instances, and these are then usually the bigger, like, Kubernetes-based cluster setups, and they're a little bit more more complicated, of, obviously, because it's a it's a big container-based cluster. But uh, more and more people just use it out of the cloud because it's a misunderstanding that you really need to configure it yourself. We have tons and tons of hosting providers where with just one click, you can get an instance for thousands of users, and this becomes more and more popular because, as I said, in the past it was more like for the for the nerdy people and it still works for them it's everything is open source everything is there but nowadays this like turnkey solutions where you can just go to a provider click and then have it uh, the full solution for your company this becomes more and more popular nowadays